Oh, wait, don't go for it. Never mind. It's fine. You don't need it. You got enough. Let's go to the car and put this in there. Okay. So I'll that one's broken. It's still stuff oh. leaking out of it. Yeah. My name is Bob Lamore. I'm the BF W Group Commander of Post 1767. And I would like to thank the City of Winooski, the RBA, and our post for putting this uh, Memorial Day parade on. And I would like to thank our service members who are now serving this great country of ours and all the veterans who have served good afternoon everyone my name is bob lamore dfw post 1767 commander and i would like to welcome everyone back to our annual memorial day ceremony to honor our fallen veterans this, thing, this day is made possible because the joint effort of this post working with the RBA, the Regular Veterans Association, the City of Winooski, the Winooski Police Department, the Fire Department, along with the Public Works and our volunteers who, without all their help, this day would not be possible. A special thanks you to the City of Winooski, Knights of Columbus, and Levine's Field Parlor and the RBA for the donation they had made towards the flags on Main Street and of course public works for hanging them. Now I would like to introduce our guest seated here with me today. Our first distinguished guest speaker, Mike Antonio. RBA Commander, Mike Crete, BFW Quartermaster Craig Levine, BFW Chaplain Tim O'Brien, and the Winooski City Manager Elaine Wayne, the Honorable Winooski Mayor Christine Law. We also welcome special guests, State of Vermont Treasurer and Winooski Resident Mike Picard, and Daisy Burbado, State Representative for Winooski. Everyone, Please stand and remove your hats for the playing of our national anthem by the Winooski School Band under the direction of Randy Argrey.
Thank you. Now I would like to welcome the Girl Scout to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Thank you, girls. I now ask the VFW quartermaster, Craig Rabin, filling in for the RBA chaplain to come forward and offer a prayer. Please leave, remove your hats. Please bow your head. On this day, forever consecrated to our heroic dead, we are assembled once again to express sincere reverence. This monument represents the resting place of our many departed comrades who served in our country's war. Wherever the body of comrades lie, the ground is forever hallowed. Our presence here is solemn commemoration of all these men and women as an expression of our tribute to their devotion to duty, to their courage, and to their patriotism. They have made us their debtors, for it is because of them our flag of our country still flies over the land of the free. Amen. Thank you, Craig. We will now pay our respect to our departed comrades. I want to specially pay tribute to the 5,237 Verm Vermonters who died fighting in the Civil War, our 27 Ver Vermonters who died fighting in the Spanish-American War, our 642 Vermonters who died in World War I, 1,233 three Vermonters who died in World War II, our 42 Vermonters who died in the Korean War, our 100 Vermonters who died in the Vietnam War, and the 42 Vermonters who died in the War on Terror. In, do in doing so, we offer a tribute, solemn tribute to all veterans wherever they may rest. Will the Honorable Mayor of Wanisti, Christine Law, please come forward and praise the reeve. In remembrance of all Winooski veterans, both living and dead, we place this wreath as a symbol of our remembrance. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to invite three members of the Vermont National Guard to place the flower to honor our fallen veterans. I place this symbol of purity. May each future generation emulate the unselfish courage of all the men and women who fought for our freedom. In memory of the heroic dead who have fallen in defense of the United States of America, I place this tribute of our devotion and ever everlasting remembrance. I place the symbol of vigilance, perseverance, and justice. Thank you, and thank you for serving. I hope I get this name right. Would Major James Lunkowski make his presentation?
The flag of this country dares to defend. May its glorious colors wave over them. Ladies and gentlemen, it is great, with great honor that I introduce our guest speaker, Mike Antonia. Sergeant First Class Antonia is a retired combat veteran with over 21 years of service. 15 of the 21 years were active duty. He served in various military installations across the world to include Germany, Bosnia, Croatia, Alaska, Louisiana, Kuwait, and Texas. Sergeant First Class Antoniak proudly served his country in combat, which includes tours in Bosnia, Bosnia, Herzegovina, and Iraq. His last assignment was as a platoon sergeant for the Task Force Red Leg, which was assigned to the 16th Military Brigade Airborne in Iraq. He has attended many military leadership schools, such as the primary leadership development course based in advanced non-commissioning officers leadership course. He is employed at Northwest Technical Center, where he teaches public safety and fire service and holds a bachelor de degree from Johnson State College and a master degree in career and technical education. Sergeant First Class Antonio has served this country in many ways as a coach, mentor, pool director, and has been a member of the Winooski Fire Department for 20 years, earning his way from a firefighter to first assistant fire chief. Among his, reward, his awards and citations from the military, he has been recognized as the Firefighter of the Year and decorated with a life-saving award. Sergeant First Class Mike Antoniak was born and raised in Winooski, and after he graduated from Winooski High School, he joined the U.S. Army. Sergeant First Class Antoniak is a member of this Winooski BFW Post and his wife Candy, his daughters Ashley, serving in the Vermont Air Guard, and Keeley resides in Winooski.
stage two, technology. Hi, thank you for all being here today. It's an honor to stand in front of you and speak about something that means dearly to me. Something in my heart, remembering our nation's fallen. Memorial Day isn't just about honoring veterans, it's about honoring those who lost their lives on the battlefield. Memorial Day is a day as we come together as a country and honor and remember our service men and women who answered America's call to service and paid the ultimate sacrifice. Today we honor all who unselfishly sacrificed for our great country. The men and women who have given their lives in service to our nation are indisputable heroes. When the country called, When a country called, they served honorably and faithfully. This is commendable in a nation where so few of our citizens have worn the uniform and accepted the inherent risk that we all accept as being when we raise our hands as soldiers. Remember our fallen. We lost 42 personnel from Vermont during our combat war on terrorism. During our deployment in Iraq in 2004, we had four soldiers who didn't return home. making their loved ones gold star families. Three soldiers were killed in combat. One died while preparing for combat in Kuwait. These soldiers were killed in action while serving in Iraq in 2004 with Task Force Red, Red Leg, the Vermont Army National Guard, while assigned to the 95th MB Battalion. We remember one of those soldiers William Normandy, who died March 15, 2004, in Kuwait. It was an early morning combat training, and we heard a call for a medic. He died in the early morning hour, hours after his fellow soldiers fiercely worked to save his life. Before he went to Iraq on March 7, he sent a, home, a letter home to his mom from Fort Dix, New Jersey, explaining it was his dedication to, to as operation going into Operation Iraqi Freedom, and he knew it was his duty. Doris Normandy said he wanted to do it so he could help the U.S. stay free. He underlined those words, U.S. free. Sergeant Normandy was born in Burlington, Vermont, and graduated just Colchester High School. He worked for Barrytown School as a bus driver, and all his school bus kids called him Mr. Bill. That's just one of our citizen soldiers that died um, for our country. He left behind two young daughters 19 years ago. They were 13 and 17 at that time. We also remember Sergeant Jamie Gray, who was killed in action at the age of 29, and he was from East Montpelier. He was a country boy who grew up in the hills of Vermont. Sergeant Gray grew up learning to hunt, fish, snowmobile, the typical Vermont things. He loved protecting people. He was proud of what he did. Uh, Sergeant Gray was killed by a roadside bomb on June 7th, and he was also out of the Vermont National Guard out of Wilson, Vermont. He was a car mechanic in civilian life, and his fellow soldiers remembered Gray as a man who was quick to help and quick to inspire and quick to lead. Sergeant Gray's mission that morning was as a combat MP to escort a convoy to the town of Karsh. And this was early on in the war, this was in 2004. Uh, the fuel that was being delivered during that convoy supplied Baghdad with fuel to keep it up and running. This was one of the missions that his platoon was tasked on a daily basis. The next two, Sergeant Alan Bean and Sergeant Kevin Sheehan, uh, were killed in a mortar attack on, at Camp Kalzu in Iraq. Again, a base that we visited on um, many occasions. The two were members of the Vermont National Guard and they were the first two killed by hostile fire since at least the Korean War. A member of the Vermont National Guard for about 12 years, Sergeant Sheehan was from Milton, Vermont, and volunteered to go to Iraq when his unit was mobilized. He was killed May 25th. When his unit was attacked by an escort, 
market intelligence uh, detail. At that time, 19 years ago, 36-year-old left behind a wife and two children. They were ages three and six. Sergeant Alan Bean was from Bridport, Vermont. He was a good old country boy again. Loved the country life. He had an old rusty old pickup truck. You know, six-pack of beer, country music. He loved it all. Young man. He was just an all-American guy. His death means whenever, when he deployed, uh, his wife, his girlfriend was pregnant at the time. Unfortunately, when we deployed Iraq, um, his wife had the baby. He left behind, his, his girlfriend said, he left behind a legacy that gave me a special gift. Bean, Bean's mother of his child. She said, I get to look at him every day and remember what a good man he is. Bean was part of the same group, squad that was going to an intelligence uh, detail at, at Camp Kauzu. He was killed, they were both killed in a mortar attack and Sergeant Bean was remembered as someone who did, did the right thing and always thought about his fellow brothers and sisters. Uh, his nickname was AJ, or Beaner, and he worked on a horse farm before joining the Army. Who would have known 19 years later, on May 27th, the same day I gave a eulogy in Baghdad, I'm, I'm talking in front of you guys today. Very special day today. So on Memorial Day, our beautiful flag, there's a um, there's a tradition on Memorial Day. Uh, it, it's, it's raised a half staff in the morning, and at noon, um, it goes up to full staff. The half staff position remembers the more than one million men and women who gave their lives in service to our nation. At noon, their memory is raised by the living who resolve not to let their sacrifice be in vain but to rise up and their stead continue to fight for liberty. So many mothers, wives, husbands, fathers, extended family, and friends do their duty every day to ensure their loved one is remembered. They carry on the understanding that they had a life of service and understand the potential of the death as a sacrifice for our sake of freedom. These men, men and women left behind carrying on a soldier's message raising up their memory like an unfurled flag. Today, we also honor the families of those lost, for they burden only that we cannot comprehend. I would be remiss if I did not mention two Winooski boys were among the six that were wounded that day in Iraq when Sergeant Sheehan and Sergeant Bean lost their life. As I was bringing them down to the medical tent, one of them said, hey, coach, he used to coach him up at He said, I tried everything. I tried saving their life. You know, it just, it's just, I could not do that. He said, Sergeant Gray and Sergeant Bean were standing in front of us and shielded us from most of the blast. And I'm sorry I tried everything to save him. Those are true American heroes. These men were ordinary people until they heard the call of duty. And they answered it. They left their families, they left their friends, their homes, their civilian jobs. They left their families and, and their lives behind. And they did it not for recognition of fame, just for the honor of serving our country. It's true today is Memorial Day and we honor the fallen, although I think it's important to talk briefly about our living veterans. <clears throat> The well, service comes out of a place of honor that these veterans hold within themselves. Their bravery, bravery, their fidelity, their compassion, their dedication to make what they do and what they have given up even moving. The selfless drive shared among veterans is truly the greatest form of love. Whether it's in one loves country, a love of one's people, or a love of what is right, this powerful act of love is what drives good to be fought for. Some people talk about your life like there's only one way to do it, to die a hero. 
That is something that should be honored to die for your nation. But we often, we often ignore the other way to give you life, the darker way. The soldier who comes back, but doesn't really come back at all. We prop up our heroes, and we ignore those who struggle every day with what they did or what they had to see and what they had to do. Those who lost something of themselves. So for this Veterans Day, I'd like to honor those soldiers, the ones who lost themselves in conflicts, those still quietly struggling with a new life, and those who have lost themselves in that struggle. So if you know a veteran, please reach out for help if needed. There's many avenues provided for us. And let us together help break that horrific cycle of roughly 22 veterans that take their lives every day. Therefore, on this day, we honor and pay tribute to all veterans, especially the ones who have fallen, because it's for their sacrifice and dedication of our nation's 23 million veterans and over 2 million service members, we are forever grateful. To all the veterans here today, I sincerely thank you for your service and your sacrifice. I share the pride you feel in being able to say you have served the greatest the greatest world in the nation. Thank you for choosing to honor fallen service members today and showing your support for our heroes of past and present. May God bless you and this great nation we call the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. I will now ask the VFW chaplain, Tim O'Brien, to read the names of our fallen comrades of Winiski. As each name is read, the bell will toll and taps will be, will be played by the burglar, and the flag will be lowered to half staff. Tim? I will now read the names of the members that have passed. William Buzier passed at 105, making him our oldest veteran. Bill was a POW in World War II and an active member of this post and the DAV. Gary Yukon Moranis. Mona Boasi. Asiat Ali. This concludes our official program. We thank you all for attending the Winooski Memorial Day Ceremony. The City of Winooski, the BFW, and the RBA would like to invite you to a barbecue. Please allow our first responders in the Winooski High School Band to get 
in the front of the line to thank them for all they for all their service. Thank you. I'm really excited that we've been able to bring back the Memorial Day Parade after a four-year hiatus, um, starting with the pandemic. As you can see, this is an event not only to honor those who have served um, and given their lives for our country, including actual Winooski residents, but it's an opportunity to bring our entire community together, you know, folks from different neighborhoods, age ranges, all kinds of different backgrounds are able to come together and enjoy a free meal, um, get to know each other, and spend some time thinking about what we are thankful for and, and the liberties that we have thanks to those who serve.